DXB. It's in the game. If you look at the lower tier of games released on Steam nowadays, there's a few interesting trends starting to emerge. In amongst all the trashy LOL simulator games, the sterling baked garbage, and the earnest but ultimately doomed homebrew Unity projects, there's a bunch of card and board games appearing. Which probably seems odd, right? Because if you were going to make a card game, you would make a card game, not a video game. Why is this happening? Well actually, I can sort of see why this would be a happening. If you make an actual physical card game, that costs a fair bit of money. You have to manufacture a physical object. And even at the cheapest Chinese production rates, that's a fairly big upfront investment. And if your new game turns out to not be the next big thing, you're going to have a garage full of cardboard to deal with. So in a lot of ways, it makes sense for a budding card or board game designer to look to Steam and make a virtual version of their game first to test the waters. However, as understandable as the presence of these electronic card games might be on Steam, it does present me, your humble games reviewer, with a bit of a problem. And that is that these things are pretty dull to review. I mean, no one wants to sit and listen to me effectively explain the rules of a game, but that's probably the only meaningful information I can impart to you in this video. There's also a problem in terms of jargon. I could tell you that Age of Rivals is a civ building card game based around a drafting mechanic, and that overall, the game is pretty obviously derived from the rule set of Seven Wonders. If you're a regular board gamer, that's all highly informative, but if you're not a cardboard fetishist like me, then probably that means nothing to you at all? Now fortunately there are some things here that do share a common language, like this default Unity Launcher's pop-up ability to absolutely ruin my first impressions of the game and the way this player registration system made me immediately want to uninstall the game and never play it. But the lure of a card game where I build an ancient civilization was just too great and having gone through the actually quite excellent tutorials I was ready to start playing the game and honestly I'm glad I pushed through those first annoyances because the core card game here is pretty damn good. As I said before it's basically a two player drafting game. Now what that means is that you start out with these four cards here and you pick one of them to buy and add to your civilization. Having made that selection, you basically swap hands with your opponent. So you are both now choosing one of the three cards your opponent decided not to build last turn. This mechanic is very popular in board games because of two main reasons. First of all, it means everyone is playing simultaneously. So it's great for avoiding downtime. It's always your go and you never have to wait to do something. The other great thing about this mechanic is that it makes for lots of quite interesting decisions. Sure, you want to buy this special temple, it's going to go great in your civilization. But if you take that, you're passing the catapult to your opponent, and he's likely going to use it to demolish your sweet new temple. So maybe you should take the catapult to block him from doing so, but the catapult isn't much use to you, and your opponent looks like he probably does want the sweet temple. So, what do you do? It's an intriguing decision, and it's the sort of thing these mechanics throw up time and time again. These decisions are absolutely the heart of the game. If I was being unkind, I'd say that the game seems to generally boil down to a decision between buying military stuff, which hurts your opponent's civilization, and buying cultural stuff, which helps your civilization. Finding the balance between these two actions is basically the key to success, and even then though, I like the way that sometimes the right answer is to split your, split your picks evenly between the two options, and at other times it's absolutely the right decision to abandon one of these options entirely and just go all in on either theatres or murderers. There's obviously a lot of stuff going on in the rules here that I'm not telling you about, but that is mostly because in truth it doesn't really affect the experience much, and discussing it at length is going to be deathly dull for this review. There is some sort of progression system going on that has you buying new cards in randomised packs, but as the cards you choose from in game are randomly drawn anyway, and you have to give your opponent a chance to buy at least 75% of the cards you take into the game with you, having super powerful cards in the rotation seems like a double edged sword to me, so it's hardly a great motivator to keep playing. I guess it adds like variety to the experience and lets things expand as you go on, but it feels like a mechanic that's in there because it's in Hearthstone even though it doesn't really make any sense here. Anyway, 
the main thing to say here is that actually, despite some pretty amateurish production elements at times, I found myself really enjoying this game to a slightly strange degree. I even got quite into playing it in the multiplayer, and usually was able to find a game which is definitely worth mentioning. The card game itself is a smart piece of design and offers a lot of fun, it offers challenging decisions in a pretty modest time frame of about 10 to 15 minutes per game. There may be some balance issues in the long run, it feels to me at the moment like cultural points are a lot easier to come by than military points, but I'm far from an expert at this game and so that might change as I play it a bit more. My only real misgiving is that this game really is kind of a tribute act to a very well known card game I've already mentioned called Seven Wonders. And there's even a two player version of Seven Wonders called Seven Wonders Duel, which is excellent and probably a better card game than this in the long run. It's hard to see past the degree to which this is plagiarised. So, realistically, how many stars do I knock off for being a knockoff? Well, you could roll a dice to be honest, which seems somewhat appropriate. For what it's worth, I'm going to give this three stars. BXB. It's in the game!